Okay, scrappy sock knitters. Take three. <laughs> Let's start. What needle am I using? Um, it's Chaogu, but you can use any needle, any brand that you have. It's a two millimeter, one meter long. You can do it with 80 centimeters, that's fine. You can do it with another thickness, that's fine. I am a rather loose knitter, so I use a two millimeter needle to give me a good fabric for socks. Okay, I'm going to start with the Judy's Magic Cast On. You'll see that I use the red one for one sock and the blue one for the other sock. Don't mix them up. That's important. Okay, we have a long tail here that's the working yarn and a short piece of thread here that's the short tail I'm going to put it over the lower needle with the short piece in the middle of the needles you make sort of a V V shape shape with the needles and then this is already your first stitch I make uh, like a triangle with my index finger from my left hand and my thumb just like you would normally do with a, a long tail cast on but you're not going to do it this way but you're going to make a loop on the upper needle because already here we have one stitch and now I'm going to go with my thumb th thread to the outside of the needles and I go inward and then we have another stitch. This is two stitches for the front of the sock and for the back of the sock or the other way around. Okay, now I have made one stitch on the upper needle. Now I'm going to twist the yarn like, th like so and now I'm going to use my thread that's the thread that's on my index finger on the lower needle that's another stitch and I'm going to twist it's it's a twisting motion you make from the outside to the inside now I'm going to use the index finger thread it's always the same thread that's doing the same job the thumb thread is making a stitch on the upper needle. I hold the stitches in place with my index finger. So the last thing we did was make a stitch on the upper needle so now I'm going to twist the yarn again and use my index th finger thread to make a stitch on the, um, the lower needle. Twist, go from the outside to the inside from the outside to the inside, outside, in. And you just twist the stitches every time. From the outside to the inside. So now I have two, four, six, seven for the front of the sock or the toe, because that's what we're doing, and seven for the back side of the sock or the toe. And what we're doing, the technique is called Judy's Magic Cast On. Look it up, there are other people who've done this technique and maybe they'll explain it much better than I do. Take your pick, you don't have to stay with me. I'm just doing what I'm doing. It's not the way, but it's my way, how I knit my scrappy socks. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and I'm going to need, this is 11, I'm going to need 12 stitches. That's how I start my toe. So, this is the humble beginning of the first sock. Just scoop them, slide them out of the way a, bit, a little bit, 
contain the, the V shape and pick up your second thread for the other sock, in this case the blue one. So the short end goes in the middle, you make the, um, the V with your index finger and your thumb. This is one stitch, so now I'm going to make a stitch on the upper needle. That's one. The index finger goes there, from the outside to the inside. That's two. And three. And four. And five. And six. Seven on the outside to the inside of the V. And now I have lost count. <laughs> That's okay. Two, four, six, eight, ten. So two more. One and one. And the last one. Okay. The beginning of your. Um, Toe up sucks. There we go. You finished. Now, the only thing you do is turn your work around. This is a li little bit loose, but that's okay. You will you will make tension with your hands. I'm um, what they call a continental. No, it's not. Co yes, continental. A continental knitter with a thread on my left hand, but you can do it the other way around with the thread on your right. That's no problem. Okay, what I do now is I make tension, just pull this little thread a little bit and pull the lower needle out. And there is where the magic happens of the magic loop. You just scoop the stitches a little bit closer, make the tension right. And now you have the Mickey Mouse ears here. That's that's the, the correct, correct, how do you say that? Um, that's the obvious thing you need for doing doing magic loop. I can't pronounce the word. Characteristic? No, just don't speak, Renee. Focus. Okay, first stitch. Just do a knit stitch and just pull the little thread a little bit. Okay. Second. Just knit your way along the first row, because now I'm knitting the first row from the first sock. And you always have to remember that you have to finish two rows in order to get one round for a sock, you know, because we're doing the same thing on the front of the sock and the back of the sock. You can't see it now, but it eventually you'll see that the toe, the, the toe is flipped double and then it's really a toe and you can see the front and the back. Okay, you slide the work from your first sock a little bit to the right and you continue with the other sock. First stitch is a bit loose, but you hold it like this and you pull and there you go. That first stitch will be all right. Just knit your way. Correct. No, I can't say it. What's that? I can't speak anymore. I, can't, I have the word in my head, but I can't pronounce it. Well, another time. Okay. You've come to the end of your second row of the second sock. And the only thing you do is just drop the needle, turn your work around, pull the under needle and slide the upper needle in the knitting position. 
It's a bit fiddly, the first few rounds, but you get there. There we go. The working thread is here. Make tension. Pull it a bit further. The Mickey Mouse ears are there. Now, because I have uh, twisted the stitches when I did the Judy's Magic Cast On, uh, you'll see that the leg of the stitches only in this row are twisted. The left leg is in the front. Don't worry, just solve that by sticking the needle in the back of the stitch. Oh, I'm splitting the yarn, see? That's not good. There we go. Just stick it in the back of the needle and you'll be fine. Just pull the thread a little bit in the back. That's only this row. After this, you don't have any problems with the twisted stitch anymore. It's just because you, you do the twisting in the, in the cast on. See, I just knit in the back, no problem. There we go. So the first round, that's the two rows for both socks, are just knitted. No increases. That's what's going to happen in the next round. Uh, row, uh, yeah, row and round. This one is also in the wrong position. Don't worry. Pull a bit tight. So you don't get any holes in the in the beginning of your work or loose stitches. Oh, I've split the yarn here. There we go. I'm sliding the stitches with my left thumb to the point of the needle. And I'm holding the stitches with my right index finger because it's so fiddly and you, if you pull hard, you can pull all the stitches off. So that would be good. Well, you can practice again. <laughs> because you have to start over. The last three. No, that's not going well. There we go. Okay, now the same thing. You're at the end of the needle. I just pull the short end a little bit. Drop the needle. Turn your work. And make sure you're always knitting on the um, stockinette side of your work. Don't don't turn it around like this and start knitting on the wrong side. So always look at the V's. If you're seeing the V's from the stockinette stitch, I presume you know what the stockinette stitch is. That's just the tricot the side. We call it in, in, in uh, the Netherlands. That's all you do. You knit. Okay, I'm going to work with the blue because that's on the right side. Make tension. Now begins the first increase. What I always do is I knit the first stitch, just normal, nothing fancy. And then I do knit in the front and knit in the back. That's the way I do my increases. No picking up um, stitches or M1s, what do they call them? I don't know. It's too complicated for me. I just do knit front and knit back. And it makes, in my opinion, a perfect um, increase. Also do it on the stitch, the one stitch before the last stitch. Always do that. Be consequent in that. Knit in the front and knit in the back. See, I've made two stitches from one stitch. And it's important 
to recognize later the horizontal bar that this way of increasing makes. And I'll explain later why that is important. Okay, don't make the mistake to use the blue or <laughs> the thread from your right sock. I don't know what color you're using for the second sock because then you're going to knit the socks together and that's not a good thing. Okay, knit the first stitch. Knit the front, knit and the back of the same stitch. You've increased one stitch. And you have to do this on the front row of your sock. Let's say this is the front of the sock. And when we turn the work, we also have to do it for the back of the toe. Because we don't want funny socks, right? Here we are, the last stitch before the last one. Knit in the front, knit in the back, and knit the last stitch. Okay, drop the needle. I always pull the lower needle first to be sure that the work is going and isn't going anywhere because it's on the cable now. And I slide the upper needle to the left. Okay, it's a repeat from the last row because we didn't make any increases here, so we have to do that. Knit the first stitch, knit front, knit back. All the way to the other end. The one stitch before the last stitch, knit front and knit in the back. Okay, drop the red, go on with the blue. The second sock, knit the first stitch, nothing fancy, just pull it a bit. Sorry, stay in frame, Renee. Knit in the front and knit in the back. And knit all the way to the one stitch before the last stitch. Oh, I split the yarn again. And again. I can't be as, as close as I normally am because I'm knitting with my phone. And I have to keep my arms stretched out to um, get this on film. Yeah. Okay, here's the stitch where we do the increase. That's it. Just pull it a bit. Turn your work, pull the lower thread, uh, cable, needle, the needle, I, I mean, sorry. Okay, now let's say the phone rings or the doorbell rings and you have to put down your work and you don't know where you are when you come back. That happens. <laughs> okay, what I do is I look at the first three stitches and when I see this little horizontal bar here. I hope you can see it. Here is the horizontal bar. That means that that is the, the stitch where I increased. That's the row where I increased. So now I don't have to increase because the way I do it, I knit one row with increases and then another row without. And that's what I continue to do until I have um, 28 stitches on the front of the sock. So that would be the blue row here. 
and on the red one and again on the other side of the red one and the other side of the blue one so i have 28 sti stitches on the front and the back of the sock which makes in my case 56 stitches and that's what i need for my shoe size i have a 38 european size i don't know i have no clue what that is in american or english or canadian or i there must be um what's it called what you that you google and you see what's what your shoe size in is in um foreign oh sorry i hit the camera in foreign sizes i have no clue first stitch see here is the increase stitch we just knit that no big deal and we go all the way down to the last stitch without increasing because that's what we did in the previous round Changed, change the position of the needles just pull them out this cord is a little bit stiff maybe I'll put them on um, a thinner cord for the other tutorials okay let's have a look you see here is the horizontal bar so i know i have to do a plain round nothing fancy just knit all the way down to the end okay i'll keep repeating these two rounds that is um the plain round which i will finish here and show you and then we will start again with an increase round and you do the same thing you knit the first stitch and you knit in the front and the back of the second stitch and also in the stitch that's before the last stitch okay that's all we do and um What you will notice after a while and i'll come back with a new uh, video i think because otherwise it would take too long if i keep on knitting uh, what you will notice finish the story or nay is that the toe will want to go like this it will flip like this that's that's the nature of this way of knitting and increasing it will form a real toe and that's what you want because you want the sock to go from 12 stitches to however you however many you need okay i'll come back when uh to, to show you where the where the flip thing happens okay see you okay scrappy sock knitters i'm back um i've just increased until i have 16 stitches on the front of the sock 16 on the back and the same goes for the other sock and now we're getting to the point where um, the sock wants to fold over or flip or double up I don't know the right term for it um, it wants to become a toe right and it should be in the right direction like so you have to have the V's the stockinette stitch the front of your knitting in the right position don't force them to go like this because this is the inside of your sock or 
you would like to have the inside of your sock on the outside. That's fine. It's not the way I'm going to knit them though. So make sure that they flip like this. And usually it's with, um, when you have 16 or, or 18 stitches, um, that it, it wants to do this on its own. It's, it's just the natural thing to do for the kind of fabric you're making. So I have 16 and I, ha I go to 18 by knitting front back of the second stitch. So we're just doing an increase round. And you see and you notice that it will, it will, it will be easier from now on to knit. It's not so fiddly anymore. And there's more logic to it, I always think. And it's a magical moment when it when it flips itself over. Okay, the um, second stitch from the last one. Knit front, knit back. And it's still, it doesn't hold its shape right now, but it will when you um, increase. With every round you increase, or every other round, I should say, because we need a plain one in between, you will notice that the toe wants to become a toe and stay that way. It won't fold back to the oval shape you're, you're knitting right now. And we're also going to put the short end in, inside your knitting in a few moments. What's important that you notice is that the first stitch I make, I pull a little gently because you don't want it to be this loose because that would make a hole, see? So just pull it slightly towards the fabric, gently, not, not hard, that's not good. I increase the stitch again. You knit all the way to the last two stitches. Knit front, knit back. And knit the last stitch and turn your work. And like I said in the previous uh, part one of the Judy's Magic Cast On, I said I, I would change uh, the knitting needle and I did. This is a thinner one, I think. This is the lace version of the chow goose um, and it, the cord is, is a bit subtle for this sock netting technique we're using. Okay, tension the yarn. Is there a lift? Is there a horizontal stitch here? No, there's not so. Then I know I have to do another increase round. I had to start all over again. That's why you see um, the yarn rolled around the little cake. Because I was filming part two of the part two and I was out of frame again. I'm like a donkey. I hit my head again on the same stone. Well, it's not as easy as you think. So pull the first stitch gently. It's, make sure it's close to your knitting fabric and then make the second one also pull a little and the third and then you can go knit normally. Now the plan is for the next round, the plain round, that the toe will curl up or flip up or I don't know the right term for that. 
like this see and then the knee the thread is here the that's the short end the long end is here and you flip it up and you're still going to to knit with um sorry with the same needle where the thread is but now what was the up the upper side is now the front side it became the front side you're just doing the same thing nothing changed only the toe the toes position has changed so knit one is there a horizontal bar yes there is i had to zoom in with my <laughs> and zooming in is not with the camera but with my eyes above my glasses then i can see it better <laughs> so there was a horizontal bar that means that we can knit this round plane all the way to the end there's the increase and there we go and now it will hold its shape better look it wants to curl up but it's inside out we have to give it a little tug and make sure leave the blue fetch the red thread make sure that the stockinette side is on the outside of the toe okay there we go and the next round i will put the awkward short ends inside the sock inside the knitting and you won't be tempted anymore i hope <laughs> if they don't pop out you won't be tempted anymore to knit with the short end so get the end and put it inside the sock like so and we'll do the same with the blue one okay your working thread from now on is always on the back needle tension pull out the back needle because it's now the back needle it's not the lower needle anymore it's the back always knit at the front I can still see the little bar so just knit along okay now we can put the blue end in there we go oh that's not smart again make sure <laughs> your working yarn is not tangled up in the short end because otherwise you get what I just did Okay, I see the horizontal line so I know that I'm on a plain round I don't have to increase in this round okay I will continue knitting like this turn your work and now I have to increase 
here, here, and for the second sock the same, and on the other row. And I will come back to you when I have 28 stitches here, 28 stitches on the back, 28 on the front of the red sock, and 28 on the back of the red sock. Because um, 56 stitches in total is enough for my feet. And I wear a uh, European size 38 shoe size. So that's enough for me. Now you have to figure out for yourself how many stitches you need. Um, you can knit 26, 28, 30, 32. And you can try to put the toe over your toes and see where you are. If you think it's too small, I have to knit a few more, increase a few more, do that. Just remember that for socks, it is better to have what they call negative ease. So your sock fabric, what you're knitting, is always a bit tighter than you would think you need. So you need negative ease. You don't need to over knit it with too many stitches because that would mean that the sock will be too big for in to wear uh, properly in your shoes. Okay, so I'll come back. I'll knit until I have 28 and I'll come back and we're going to see what we have to do next. Okay, see you. Hi Scrappy Sock Knitters, I'm back. Um, as you can see, I have toe very, I have two very small toes. Uh, started with 12 stitches, increased every other round until I have 28 stitches on the front of the sock, 28 on the other front of the sock, on the back also 28, and here 28. So I'm done with the increases now, and now I can um, choose to change the color or not. You can easily knit on with the same color if you like, they're your socks. I'm not, I'm going to introduce a new color. What I do is I cut the thread, like here, do the same with the other one. And I use the um, clasp weft join. It's all over YouTube. There are a lot of people who explain the method. Um, I found the method again and uh, realized it had a name. Because my grandmother taught me this technique of changing colors or um, introducing the same color yarn because uh, your uh, skein is um, used up so you have to change to a new thread. She explained it to me, she showed it to me and um, but she didn't call it anything so <laughs> I didn't know it had a name until I saw it on YouTube. So it's the clasp weft join. It's easy. Now these are the colors I can choose. I can switch them up like this. So the bluish new ball will go with the blue and the reddish orange one will go with the red one or vice versa. I can go with some neutrals, very similar, not the same but similar. Or I can <coughs> use a totally different um, cell striping yarn. There's some blue in here, red, orange here. The choices are yours. Your socks, your choices. I'm going to go with this combination. So first I'll start with this little ball. And what I do is I put them down like this so they cross over. 
fold them over like they're double. Make tension. Oops. You'll notice that um, I'm not starting with the new color on the outside of the sock. I just randomly cut the thread and it doesn't matter to me where the transition will be in the sock. I'm not, um, well, very strict on myself that I want to have the transition here. I just let it happen. See, it's already coming. I knit with both threads from the old color a few stitches just for as long as, need, as is needed and then the new color comes up. So what was that? Four stitches? Yes, about four stitches. You can do it for six stitches or more. Yes, you will have a double fabric here. It's a little bit um, thicker than your usual fabric. But I've been doing this for years and I have I don't feel it when I wear my socks, so don't worry about it. Four stitches. I have a long piece so I can do six of them. And then you just lose the short end and continue knitting with the single thread. And we're going to do plain rounds now because we don't have to increase anymore. All the way to the end. And then I will be ready to introduce the other new color. Leave this one and start with the new one. I'll put it down for the sake of the tutorial. Normally I do it in my hands. Okay, make the crossover. Fold them up. Tension the yarn. Sorry, my nose is a bit full. <laughs> oh, where is the second one? Here's the second one. See, this is more than four stitches, but I don't care where it starts, the new yarn. I don't care. My grandmother used to say, if you run fast enough, no one will notice. Okay, that's a small tail. I'll deal, oops, I'll deal with the ends later because um, when you use this technique it would be enough to just cut the thread here because it's knitted double up here so it the little tail won't go anywhere what I do is even though I know they're secure and they're safe I still weave in the ends when I'm done with the sock just to be sure, it, it gives me a better feeling. <laughs> and, and I don't mind weaving in the ends. I really don't. It's part of the, the knitting the socks, the scrappy socks, right? But if you don't want to do that, just cut them off. You will be fine. Because when you wear the socks, the wool part in the, in the sock, in the yarn, will sort of felt anyway on the inside and when things get felted they won't come loose you can switch the balls out if you're worried about them tangling up
and at the end of this small part video I will show you um, a few of my socks and explain what and why why is that thing here oh that's a thread <laughs> I was worried I, I had done something wrong this should go in here all the ends you put in your sock and you um, they don't bother you again anymore um, what was I saying uh, yes I'll show you some examples of my socks of how wide or thin um, the new colors are going to be it's just a personal preference you know some people like to make them even the left and the right sock so they only do six or ten or twenty or two of the same color um, because they they want to have them as matchy matchy as possible that's your choice nothing wrong with that I think I've made one pair of scrappy socks that I sort of try to match match up so the cuffs the toes and the heels are the same and the in between um, portion I try to match that up and I think I succeeded in the end but that's it says enough that I only have one pair that is knitted up that way because well my personal preference is that I would like to have my socks as mismatching as possible but there's nothing wrong if you want to match them up your socks your rules okay now we come to the point where we have to for well maybe 10 stitches knit the uh, both the threads of course and that's the part that makes the fabric a little bit thicker but really I don't notice it even when I have woven in the ends see here the stitch is coming a little bit loose to the front so you just tug the little thread the end and you'll be fine okay now we're or you are and I am we are all going to knit up um, in, in the way you want to um, have fun fun with the sock so you can either choose for the 10 sequence of one color or four or 20 or mix them up um, it's your sock you'll decide I'll stop knitting now and show you some of the socks that I have made in the past just to explain what will happen so these are obviously um, begun with two different yarns and my instinct told me to just go with sequences that are sort of equal with different yarns but with the same amount of rows there's no science to it I just follow my instinct I always say if people ask me how do you do it I say to them I think like a six-year-old with a new box of crayons and I just go let's uh, leave my mind and just follow my instinct and here you can see that I for fun I switched the cuffs and the heels up so that's um, one way to do it another example are these they're not finished yet because they have the stitch markers and I need to do the afterthought heels so I started off with the same color and I ended with the same color and 
maybe I'll do the heels if I have the yarn I, if I still have the yarn I will do the heels the same as the cuffs and the toes but here you can see that I um, did the sequence a little bit different here I was getting annoyed with switching colors <laughs> because I did them the same width but here I was adventurous and I was switching it up see that's a possibility and you can also see that um, after I placed the stitch marker I'll explain later um, I did uh, three three to one yeah knit three pearl one sequence that's sort of a pattern you can knit in stockinette all the way up you can do knit two pearl two you can knit do knit three pearl one that's possible your socks your choice now these are also not finished yet started with the same toes and then went from the beginning I sort of did what I thought was good no explanation needed I just went for it now what I'll, what will we do with the afterthought heels I don't know maybe do the fuchsia here and the blue there if I still have the fabrics uh, the, the yarn if I don't have the yarn I'll find something else that's the beauty of scrappy socks okay so I'll continue knitting on this uh, and I cannot tell you now what they will look like because I can finish these small balls or I can break them halfway and start with a new color or knit with this one all the way up and break this one or the other way around and introduce a new color what you're going to do now is change your color like the way I explained the clasp weft join you knit up um, until the point where the sock measures the number of centimeters that is suitable for your foot length and that will be if you have measured your foot and say my foot is 24 centimeters you have to place later when when we are um, at the tutorial will I show you you have to place or you have to knit now until five centimeters before your total foot length length okay so for me that's 19 centimeters measured from the toe the tip of the toe to here that's 19 so that's the homework uh, for me and for you um, what I want to, to mention is um, if you start knitting again on uh, the second sock or the first sock it doesn't matter I want to explain because I made that mistake in the in the beginning of my sock knitting career very often that is if you have put your work down and say the yarn is twisted around the working needle what if you pull this thread now and you start knitting you will have made another stitch here so that's not good because that's going to be a big hole when you're finished so always make sure that your thread where are we oops is here now they got twisted 
see it should come straight off the back needle see here and it stays on the inside of your work so don't fold it over the the back needle because you're making an extra stitch and that's not what you want okay that's a, just a little tip for the long piece you have to knit be aware of that okay i'll come back when i finished knitting my uh, 19 centimeters <laughs> 